Hey guys, it's Greg. Today we're gonna to be looking at Google's crash course on machine learning. Now this thing is completely free. It has a lot of great content. And if you want to take a look at it, make sure to follow along in the description of the video. You should see that link to this crash course along with some other ones you may be interested in to check out as well. So if you go to that link, I'm not sure if it goes to this exact spot that I went to, but you should be able to find this crash course here, machine learning crash course with TensorFlow APIs. This does use TensorFlow, which is unsurprising. It's a Google crash course, and Google is pretty much the inventor of this TensorFlow library. At least they're very closely associated with that. And let's take a look. So firstly, view prerequisites. This most definitely does have prerequisites. Uh, what's a little bit nicer about this than many, many other courses is they're very specific about the pre prerequisites that you're going to need. And actually, they tell you how to learn those things usually as well. Um, so as you can see, we're just going to jump to prerequisites and blah, blah, blah. You must be comfortable with variables, linear equations, graphs of functions, histograms, and statistical means. Okay, so these are relatively uh, common um, generic beginner ideas. Uh, but you know, if you are a complete beginner, it's okay if you don't know some of these things, uh, especially like the linear equations one. Most likely you probably have seen them before, even if that term itself is a little bit scary, uh, but we'll take a look at that down below. Uh, and you should be a good programmer. Ideally, you should have some experience programming in Python because the programming experiences are in Python. Uh, so if you do, uh, if you don't know anything about Python, then I do have a, a playlist, or actually I also have uh, a very long video on Python from the complete introduction uh, to knowing quite a bit. I'll also link that in the description if you wanna take a look at my video for that. Um, and there's also lots of other resources on Python as well. Um, okay, so we're gonna skip that. So algebra, variables, coefficients, and functions. You can see if you right click this, I'll just open in a new tab uh, and it's going to load uh, some Khan Academy videos, which is really funny uh, because I don't think Google has any association. Uh, I think they're just being really uh, you know, honest about uh, a good way to learn these things and Khan Academy is a great way to do that. If I take a look at logarithms, well, this is a Wikipedia article. So they're kind of just showing you uh, different resources that they have available to learn some of these things. Um, you know, of course, Khan Academy will also have a video on logarithms, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but anyway, so they have all the different ideas here of things that, that you're, they're assuming that you know. And they have, you know, Python, all the different things. If you right click this, if else conditionals, it's going to go right to the Python uh, logs or, or docs themselves. Okay, uh, so with that stuff out of the way, there is, you know, some prerequisites, they tell you what you need to do. Uh, so let's go to back to the overview, because there is an important piece in the top of the prerequisites is machine learning course, sorry, it's a little bit small. So I'm zooming it in uh, Is machine learning crash course right for you. Uh, if you have little or no machine learning background, then what they say is we recommend going through all of the material in order. Uh, pre work, please before beginning machine learning crash course, do the following. If you're new to machine learning, take this problem framing course very quick, uh, NumPy, NumPy tutorial, pandas, pandas tutorial. So there's a little bit of pre-work as well. Uh, and then after that, you can pretty much jump into this, uh, this ordered content. So introduction to machine learning, you'll see some writing, usually some learning objectives, and then a video here. As you'll see, uh, this guy is not the same guy throughout. Um, if you do go into just say descending into machine learning, Note that this video here, it is uh, it is clearly not the same person. So it doesn't mean it's disorganized. It just means they're switching it around a little bit in terms of who's teaching what, which is totally fine. Um, if you go through here to classification down to video lecture, it's uh, actually that same guy as well. So uh, I believe that that guy is all of the content and that uh, the other guy is just the introduction. I could be wrong. I haven't taken uh, every single bit of this, although I've actually stepped through this uh, every now and then. Um, it's something that I used a lot and it's actually transformed a, a bit over the years. I don't think there used to be all of these video lectures associated with it. Um, I was going to a lot of the written content when I wasn't sure on very particular ideas. Uh, so if you don't also want to, if you're not interested in just going through the full course, um, this is a really great uh, place just to get different content as well. Um, because something like, uh, you know, maybe you forgot a little bit about training and test sets. They'll go here into, say, splitting data, training set versus test set. 
uh, write it very clearly, um, you know, usually have visuals as well. Uh, and then they'll often have a video associated with that, uh, along with actual visualizations clearly from like matplotlib or one of the Python libraries. I think it's actually plotly given that outline. Um, but anyways, basically they have all the concepts here for basic machine learning. Uh, and they also step into TensorFlow. So it's a really great course. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every little bit of the content, but we have framing, descending into machine learning, so linear regression, training and loss, really fundamental ideas. You'll see it's very, very much from a machine learning point of view, uh, focusing on being able to solve uh, regression and classification problems, whereas maybe some other machine learning, especially books, would be much more statistics focused, uh, have a lot more statistics, rigor and fundamentals. Uh, but here they really, really focus on kind of getting you up to speed so that you can go in a Colab notebook, go on Kaggle, uh, start solving these problems and understanding what's going on, uh, specifically with tensor flow uh, which is you know it's what i use it's not what everybody uses um, scikit-learn is also very important uh, and pytorch uh, a very common deep learning alternative um, but i think T tensorflow is probably the right choice to start out with um, and even use for forever possibly depending on its its lifespan it's a, it's quite state-of-the-art and we have so many nice courses here like a lot of time spent 90 minutes on classification thresholding this is actually the piece that i spent a lot of time uh, when i was just going back to understand some of these ideas i may have missed uh, especially in the first andrew ing machine learning course uh, some of these things i really forgot about but they're really really important uh, precision and recall understanding those very very well roc and aoc curves um, i can't even remember if andrew ing actually goes over those ideas in the first course or in his in his original one uh, but there's so many so many nice ideas in here uh, up all the way to some very very state-of-the-art ideas uh, teaching it to the point where you actually need to know it uh, and not so far into the details where it gets you know a little bit uh, approaching the useless side to be honest uh, Andrew Ng's stuff is incredible like I love it um, you know he updated it uh, but sometimes I do feel like he approaches some areas where I feel like it's a little bit rigorous not totally necessary at times um, and it's more so if you're going to be a researcher or trying to expand on those ideas uh, something like this you know 50 minutes for embeddings uh, is a lot less time than Andrew Ng spends on uh, his embedding piece he spends he goes into the rigor a lot there uh, and I thought it started to approach uh, a little bit not useless by any means but a little bit more in depth than necessary and so I feel like this is probably uh, the right amount of time to spend on this for for most people uh, we also have other stuff here so there's ML engineering uh, but I don't believe that they I'm not sure if they consider this the same crash course or not. I guess they would, because if I keep this, if I bring back everything, sorry about this. Yeah, I guess they do. So ML concepts, uh, and then just a little bit of time on engineering um, and different data related stuff. Uh, ML systems in the real world, you know, not a lot of time here. It's kind of just an example uh, in the in the real world. Uh, and then after you get through this, it's quite nice, you know, a great course. Conclusions, next steps, what are we really considering after this? You're ready to take the next machine learning course, data preparation and feature engineering in ML. If I click on that, then there you go. We got a lot more uh, and they keep going. So conclusion, summary, do they have next steps from here? Uh, not seeing any here, but there's actually a lot of courses. If you go to their their home here, uh, Google Machine Learning Education, they have so much foundational courses. Um, you know, this is probably the same stuff that we just talked about, uh, but some of it's not. Testing and debugging, uh, explore advanced courses as well. Uh, there's all of this stuff like recommendation systems. Um, and even I actually am thinking about going into some of this because this is approaching some of the areas that I don't know as well as I should either. Uh, and so, you know, this is awesome. Uh, please take a look in the description if you didn't know, uh, if, you, if you don't know how to get there. Uh, I also have some other stuff in the, in the video description that you may be interested in and let me know your thoughts on this guys you know I, I really really like it um, especially the written explanations I feel like many many tutorials including my own I can be guilty of this as well um, where you'll I'll spend like a lot of time for the video content uh, but then my written content can be a little, little bit lack um, in terms of explaining what's going on at a very simple and quick to read level uh, I think they're really they do this really really well uh, and especially if you're someone like me that 
you know knows this relatively well uh, and you just you need to brush up on ideas every now and then maybe you missed a content uh, a piece of content somehow in a, in a course like you skipped it or it just it just didn't show up in the way that you learn these things uh, i think this is one of the best sites possibly the best site uh, just to go and and learn some things quickly uh, you don't you don't necessarily have to watch the videos on it you can just read a little bit of content see some coding examples maybe plug that into your own code if that's what you need to be doing um, and i think it's great for that so check it out in the description uh, I hope, you know, if you, if you guys didn't know this existed and I'm just telling you it existed, uh, then, you know, I, I think this would be really valuable for you to check out. Um, and if you have heard of this, you know, let me down, let me know in the description or sorry, let me know in the comments down below uh, what your thoughts are on it, um, whether you think it's missing something and there's a big reason you kind of avoid it or maybe you do use it all the time and you really like it. Um, anyways, I hope you have a great day, guys. I will see you later. Bye bye.